everybody, welcome back. We are so excited to get started again with our academic year of content. So similar to what we saw in the spring, this fall we will have a whole series of STEM content each week for you to engage with and explore. On Mondays, we'll do a snack time science where we will do a quick overview of a scientific concept um, that you can kind of dive further into as the week goes along. On Wednesdays, we'll do a themed read aloud, uh, and that book will either cover the subject matter we're talking about that week or one of the additional soft skills that we work to build in our in-person programs. And then on Friday, we'll do a Rosie Makes where we get to dive in and build a project using this, the um, background and the information and the skills that we explored on Monday and Wednesday as well. Um, so that's what I'm going to bring to you today. So <laughs> we'll have this throughout the entire academic year. Um, and so to kick off the first snack time science of this fall and this academic year, we're going to explore something called biomechanics. Okay, it's a big fancy word, right? <laughs> but essentially, biomechanics is the study um, of how our bodies, or actually how all living organisms work, right? It's called biomechanics. Bio meaning body, mechanics meaning how things function. Um, and so we're gonna combine those skills, explore them further, and we're gonna then build biomechanical hands at the end of the week. So do you think it would be easy to build a robot, right, that can walk and talk and pick things up? It's kind of tricky to think about, right? There's, you may have seen some robots rolling around. You might have a um, vacuum cleaner that is a robot, right, that picks stuff up for you. <laughs> There's a bunch of different variations of that. But it's pretty rare, there's more of them now, but it's pretty rare to see like a humanoid robot. So a robot that's actually functioning like a human being. And the reason why we don't see as many of them right now is because the technology is still being developed, right? Our bodies are super, super complicated. It might not seem complicated to you that I can talk to you right now or walk across the room or do different things, but the way that all of our systems and our body comes together is a complicated process. And all of them have to work together almost perfectly in order for that those things to happen, right? And so if one thing is off, they don't function in the same way and they're just different. So if you think about it, a newborn baby, right? is born, right? It's not walking, it's not talking, it's not holding its head up, right? But in a very quick uh, period of time, it's able to kind of understand how its body functions and be able to do those things. It might not seem complicated to you, but me picking up this water bottle and turning it around, it means that all of the systems in my body are doing everything they need to do at exactly the right time that this bottle can wave around my head and move, right? And so being able to, to study the actual mechanics that allow me to pick this up allows us to also create robots or machines or other things that are going to be able to do that same type of work. But why would I want a robot, right, that could function like a human? Well, think about it. If I'm um, testing car crashes or I'm going into a place where there's hazardous materials or work that's going to take hours and hours to complete, it might be advantageous for me to build a robot that can function like a human, so it can have the detail of being able to twist the top and put the top on and move it around and, and be delicate with that, um, but not putting a human in harm's way. Now, don't get me wrong, that's the sunny side of things, right? There's whole kind of ethics conversation that you can dive into as we look at making robots like humans and looking at artificial intelligence and how all of those things build out. And I would encourage you to dive into that, right? Because part of us being scientists and building new things and inventing new things is looking at the impact that they have on the world. Um, but today, we're gonna focus on the mechanics, the biomechanics of the way that our hands work and how I can literally bend my hand. Because at the end of the week on Friday in Rosie Makes, Grace and Veronica are going to come and show you how to make your own biomechanical hand. Okay? <laughs> so, but to do that, first of all, we have to look at how our hands work. So inside of your hand, there are bones, right? There are muscles, and there are tendons, okay? And in your hand alone, there are 27 different muscles, right? You have 14 phalanges, right? Those are your finger bones. It's a fun word, phalanges, right? So you have 14 finger bones. And in your hand, you have five hand bones um, that are called uh, metacarpals. And then down here, you have these little tiny bones that rotate in your wrist that are called carpals. For our build, 
We're not going to really talk about the carpals. Um, we're going to talk about the metacarpals and the phalanges, right? And how they interact with both your muscles and with your tendons. So what are muscles and tendons? Hold on right a second, and I'm going to show you a picture so you can see what I'm talking about. Okay, so we talked about our bones, right? So you got your hand bones, you got all 14 of those in your fingers, your metacarpals, and then your carpals. And then separate from that, you have these things called tendons. Can you see those big blue lines that are, are they blue? Yeah, blue lines that are running down the hand. Those are your tendons. And effectively, they're long strings. If you hold your hand up, I'm going to hold mine this way, but you're going to hold yours this way so you can see it. And you bend your fingers backwards. You're going to see what looks like strings. Can you see that? I'm going to come into this light. See these lines here, these things that look like strings? Those strings are tendons, and they are what allow us to bend our fingers backwards and forwards because our tendons are attached to our muscles, okay? Nice big muscles in our hands, and they go down. The interesting thing that you might not have noticed is when I want you to look at it, I want you to take your arm and I want you to squeeze your hand together and I want you to look at what moves when you do that. What's happening, right? When I squeeze my hand, right, I can see this getting tighter and smaller, but you know what also moves? Do you see that? Do you see on my hand, my the bottom of my arm, that muscle is also flexing? Yeah, can you see that? It's like dancing. Do, 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 do. So when we bend our hand, the tendons are actually attached to this muscle in our arm. And when we squeeze our hand, the tendons get pulled. The muscle gets smaller, it contracts, it gets tighter, and it pulls on the string of the tendon, okay? So when we squeeze our hand, that muscle gets shorter, it contracts, and it pulls those tendons down in our hand. And by being able to do that, our bones are able to move. So it's not, so even this one finger, you see it moving? It's happening through this whole hand mechanism. And then we have muscles, right? Because our muscles are, A, allow us to be strong, right? <laughs> they also keep everything attached, right? So our bones are connected to our muscles and our tendons are connected to our muscles. After that, and everything works together to allow our hands to bend. So by studying the anatomy of the hand, knowing that we've got these structure, right? We've got bones, we've got muscles that allow us to move those bones and then we have tendons that move those muscles those three components not even talking about all of the electricity that goes through our hand yep you've got neurons that's one right there right and they're they're able to send the signal to move that hand from your brain all of those components help us build a machine right help us build a hand that functions like ours with a thumb that can pick things up or curl a weight all of those components are super important. By breaking that down, we can then replicate something that has, you know, a structure, right? So in this instance, the muscles are kind of loosely built into this, right? We've got bones and we can replicate every single bone. So we know where there's joints and where things bend and how they move. And then we're able to look at those tendons. We have to have those strings to pull our hand. And when we pull them, Right, we can bend our fingers just the same way we do. And actually, look at this, we can actually pick stuff up the same way our hand does and throw it across the room. Or we could, you know, hold our face or wave, <laughs> or let's see if I can do it. Uh, let's build this one and this one. I can make bunny ears <laughs> or goofy things in the back. Maybe that's not what you're building robots for, but the point is by studying the body, by studying biomechanics, by studying how living organisms work in multiple different facets of different places, we can create machines, innovations, things that make not only our life easier or safer, we can explore that. Don't get me wrong, again, there's caveats to that, right? There's places where you wanna make sure that you're building things that are helping people. Um, and we'll dive into that later. <laughs> but ultimately, by studying the body, we can learn more about the world around us. And it's called biomechanics. And biomechanical engineers explore all of that. So in the bottom of this um, video, there's links to some amazing women who work as biomechanical engineers. And I would encourage you to check them out. Join us back on Wednesday for Rosie Reads, where we're going to read an awesome book about a girl who got to actually name Pluto, right? And she was young, right? She was 11. Um, and then on Friday, come back uh, for Rosie Makes, and we, you will get to build your own biomechanical hand. Um, this The biomechanical hands are for an age of... Um, 
a range of age groups rather. Um, my, uh, our girls, Veronica and Grace are seven. Um, they built it, they did it, they did a great job, um, but you can change it and make it more complicated as you go up. So we've done this project with everyone from seven all the way to 14. So it's really cool for kind of anybody to dive into. So we'll see you back on Monday. We'll see you back later on in the week. As always, let us know if you have questions and please share your project with us in the comments or your comments generally about the topic because we'd love to hear from you. So with a big old, we can do it in my biomechanical hand. We'll talk to you soon. Bye.